In broad terms, the state of American energy is strong, even during this time of what we call realignment. The United States is more energy self-sufficient and has transitioned from an era of energy scarcity and dependence into a global energy leader. Today, the global energy world is realigning with the United States poised to remain a dominant global player, something that was unforeseen just a decade ago. The energy policy decisions we make today will determine whether this nation remains a positive stabilizing force in the world's energy market and whether consumers can continue to count on reliable, affordable, and abundant domestically produced energy for years to come. Domestically, the 21st century American energy renaissance, which has created an unprecedented surplus of energy, has significantly lowered energy costs for American consumers and delivered a sizable lift to our U.S. economy. For example, the Energy Information Administration estimates that the American consumers have now saved on average $700 in 2015 on transportation fuel costs alone as a result of this abundant energy. And IHS now estimates that the average U.S. income was $1,200 higher in 2012 given lower home energy costs brought about by unconventional development. IHS estimated the figure could reach as much as $3,500 a year per family by 2025. And even during this period of realignment, the oil and gas industry remains an important source of well-paying jobs for millions of Americans. America's oil and natural gas industry supports approximately 1.2 trillion in U.S. gross domestic product. That's the equivalent of the size of the Mexican economy, according to the World Bank. Fortunately, we know how to bring about America's brighter energy future which means lower costs for American consumers, a cleaner environment, and American energy leadership, because that is today's reality here in the United States. We call it the U.S. model. Our nation's success as a global energy production and carbon reduction leader is rooted in the United States' unique federal system, which allows the states to be an active and semi-autonomous actor when it comes to how its energy resources are developed. Our system of government working in combination with our long tradition of entrepreneurship and distinctive innovative spirit has led to world leading reductions in carbon emissions now at near 20 year lows. Encouragingly, there is growing support within Congress for this U.S. model, as we like to call it, this style of energy policies. As many in this room are well aware, just last month, as Congress was finishing the people's business before recess, we witnessed a rare glimpse of bipartisanship and forward-looking energy policy on the national level with the lifting of the 40-year ban on crude oil exports. Lifting the ban is a win for American consumers and the economy, according to a recent study by ICF International, which found that lifting this ban could save consumers as much as $5.8 billion per year on fuel costs. Congress's action was a victory of long-term vision and fact-based policymaking over political ideology and ideological dogma. As the President's last full year in office begins, we hope that he will take note of and help foster what we like to call the U.S. model. We hope that he'll note that the already heavy regulatory burden almost 100 pending regulations on the oil and gas industry and counting upon the oil and gas industry could hinder rather than advance what he hopes to be one of the administration's defining legacies, environmental improvement. And while the outcome of November's election is far from clear, it is certain that no matter who becomes the 45th president of the United States, he or she will take a nation that is first in oil and natural gas production, first in refining ever cleaner fuels, and first in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. They will also have a choice to continue the United States' positive role of energy abundance, global leadership, 
domestic economic opportunity, and environmental improvement, or to dismantle the progress we've made by implementing policies born from ideology and unmoored to science or to facts. In this new year, let us all resolve to work together toward a shared vision of a world where everyone, without regard to zip code, state, nation, continent, or hemisphere, has access to reliable, safe, and affordable energy. We want to foster a national energy policy discussion that remains above the partisan fray and immune from the misinformation campaign deployed by fervid critics of fossil fuels. Because the reality is that no single source of energy will alone solve our problems or is the source of all of our woes. Moreover, no group holds all the answers or the solutions to the challenges that we face. I continue to believe and hope that all of us ultimately have the same goal, to leave our community, our nation, and our world better than we found it for the next generation. They deserve nothing less than our collective best efforts to that end, and they are counting on us to put into place realistic policies that enhance our nation's energy security and national security, and while at the same time promoting job creation and responsible environmental stewardship, economic growth, and status as a global energy leader. Thank you very much.